Hello, everybody. Um, you're about to watch a conversation between myself and Jade Bradley. Um, cuts on fairly quickly. Um, we had been proposed to do it through the Fishbrook Live, and something had happened. We tried a few times, the connection kept breaking through. So, this is the recording from when I started to record. Um, but just before that, we just introduced Jade. Um, she's a nutritional therapist, um, takes a very holistic view on your overall well being and it brings, helps put together. Uh, a food plan and support you through making dietary changes and things like that. Um, she's very good at what she does. I've known Jade now um, quite a while. Um, we engage with each other back and forth a lot. Um, so today's topic was just around immunity, um, ways to boost your immunity, things to think about. Um, how do you make food maybe go a wee bit longer? You know, so people are stockpiling at the moment with the, the likes of pasta, rice and all these different things um, and bringing an element of maybe fresher food on date and what fresher foods and well, how you can make it go a wee bit longer and things like that. Um, very good conversation, that's about half an hour long. Um, something I've been thinking about, um, why I'm sort of going forward and doing a wee bit more sort of live feed again and stuff. Once I get the technical side of it um, ironed out, um, as you know, um, the that saying, you know, not all superheroes wear capes at the minute. And a big shout out to all the, the nurses and doctors and staff and things to get, you know, they're wearing scrubs at the minute. Um, they're your postman, they're your bus drivers, they're people working on the, the local shops. Um, you know, so many superheroes um, going about the country, keeping the country kind of afloat. Um, and people getting serviced um, with the things that they need. And everyone else, um, being a superhero could be sitting at home wearing the jammies and hopefully if you're one of those people sitting in the house in your jammies or out in the garden listening to something or just entertaining kids doing the homeschooling big shout out to, uh, to these people as well uh, it's not the the easiest thing in the world to do um, but we're just talking about immunity boosting the immunity um, of course it's not something that happens overnight but it might be something that people might think a wee bit more about going forward and just keeping their immune system in check or um, being prepared maybe for anything that might come our way again, whether it is a seasonal flu, this, that, and the other. Um, so that's what the point of this one was. I do intend doing a few more. Um, I'm hoping to get a couple of other people on board, you know, people that um, yoga, exercise, people. There's a lady that I don't know that knows a wee bit of everything that's going on. She'd be great to get on. Um, a few of my other friends, just to pass a wee bit of time and um, hopefully bring value to people at home that are sitting. Not necessarily twiddling their thumbs, but, you know, not sure what to do. And there's a lot of stuff that's on the TV and maybe, you know, we only really need to watch the one update at five o'clock or whatever time of the day that it be on. You know, and the rest of the time then, you know, it can be time of being in reflection or exploring things or learning something new and hopefully this contributes a bit to that. So enjoy this bit now with uh, Jade. So you're focused mostly on the, on the well-being as a whole of a person and by doing that you're using people what people are putting under their body as, as their method or mode of delivering it. Um, I think a lot of people underestimate the like fundamentals of health for example um they try and look for like a quick fix you know something that's like a miracle um cure or something that's like just going to be a tablet that will cure all ails but really it has taken it back to basics and looking after your sleep managing your stress uh, feeding your body with the appropriate nutrients and making sure that you're hydrated and managing, you know, um, the balance of hydration with other kind of substances like caffeine and things. So, like, although the, everybody probably knows that they need to do them things, do they actually really do them? Is the question. Mm -hmm. Um. So basically, what's your immune system, and how can food? How can you help it with food? So your immune system is your body's defense. Uh, for any kind of pathogens, bacteria, viral infections coming into your body. There's different layers of your immune system. So starting off even with your skin, with your 
wait till you get tears in your eyes, that's an immune response to protect your eyes. You know, mucus in your um, nasal passage and your um, throat, um, that's all. Even your skin, that's a first line of defense for your immune system. Um, and then um, these are all things that protect, you know, outside pathogens from entering into the body. So whenever you do get like a block nose or whatever, that's your body fighting off something that is aggravating. It's, you know, it's getting under your body and causing um, disruption. So your body is trying to stop that. So like, that's why it's important that I always say, do listen to your body. Things happen in your body for a reason and it's kind of like a warning flag to tell you, you know, something's going on here. But what we'll just do is, you know, sometimes if people get nasally or mucusy, they'll just go and take a decongestant. So that'll stop that immune response um, rather than, you know, kind of going, right, what is it that's causing this? So that's your first line of defense. And then you have your second line of defense, which is your, you know, your white blood cells, um, all your kind of T helper cells. You've got your antibodies, um, all the kind of the little fighter pilots inside your body that are trying to fight against infection. Um a lot of our immune system is in our gut. So like over 60% of your immune system is in your digestive system. So that's why it's so important to support your immune system with the foods that you're eating. Because if your gut doesn't work properly, then your immune system can function properly. So they are really, really closely related. And it is really important to look after that side of your, your digestive health and your immune function. Also, your um, detoxification system, your liver is really closely related to your immune system with the detoxification of hormones and toxins in the body. So your immune system, your gut and your liver are all like intertwined and to, to be functioning optimally, you want them to be working in synergy. That makes sense. Hmm. So they're all working together and the best way that you can help the system is by the fuel that you put in your body, the higher quality, the better quality that it is, the less work. So say your gut system isn't working too fantastically and if it's working overly hard to try and get rid of, um, well, that's the idea of fibre. You could, if you take a good fibre and take that helps sort of red out any excess stuff that's in your bowels and things like that. So it's important to sort of help your system to help you. Like if your gut is inflamed and in a term leaky, which means that the gut wall is compromised um, and it's, you know, the cells aren't packed tightly together. Um, your gut essentially is like a traffic controller. So what we want the gut to do is direct nutrients to where they need to go in the body. Um so, you know, um, that's optimally what it should be doing. And then it should be directing toxins to get excreted from the body. But if our gut is leaky, um, then the, the bacteria, the food, the toxins can all leak into our bloodstream where we don't want them to be. And then they can go around our body, kind of causing havoc and creating inflammation, which is something that we want to stop doing. So it's, it's, it's stopping a lot of things we want to happen. It's stopping the nutrients that we're eating getting to where they need to be it's causing inflammation which is a driver of all types of illness in the body um it's compromising our immune function it's compromising our um liver detoxification it just it just wreaks havoc in the body like our our gut is like the epicenter of where a lot of processes go on in the body and we want to support that as best we can mm -hmm. Um, so you mentioned on the on Joe and we caught out a wee bit for the Facebook Live, but for the benefit of anybody who's just joining now, your whole approach and ideally, and it's something that I've experienced in my own life and in different areas, you know, it's the prevention is far better than the, the reactive kind of side of things. So what what's a good way to start? building up your immunity so that whenever something does kick in, like what's kind of going around the world now at the minute, obviously any steps that people maybe take today will start to maybe help their immune system get boosted, but that's going to take a bit of time to really build it up over the long term. Yeah, exactly. So like 
everybody, I'm not saying to go and do these things, you know, you have to do everything at once because that's really overwhelming. And as human beings, we like to do things incrementally rather than all at once. So um, one of the main, main factors for um, everybody to support their immune system, and especially at this time, I would say is to support your stress levels and manage them as best you can because um, one thing that massively affects our immune system is um, our stress response. So if our bodies are running off a uh, um, sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight, which is whenever we're getting ready to run away from that saber tooth tiger, our cortisol levels are increased, um, our melatonin levels are reduced. So um, cortisol and melatonin work in synergy with each, with each other. But melatonin is a very healing, restorative hormone. It's one that promotes sleep, but it's also one that supports our immune system a lot. Um, so we we want to get that vice versa, you know, the cortisol down and melatonin up, which would be the parasympathetic nervous system. Um, whenever we're in sympathetic nervous system, um, our digestive system is literally just um, put on hold. So we're not, um, our body just wants to excrete any of the, the food that's been put into it. So that's why when people are nervous, they might be running to the toilet. You know, their, their bowels are emptying to get ready for that fight or flight. We're not absorbing any nutrients. Um, our digestive system stops producing um, gastric acid, um, which we need to digest our food appropriately. Um, it's literally just pumping the oxygen and the blood to the heart to get us ready to be able to flight um, or fight um, so that compromises our immune function and um, our ability to fight off infections viruses um, it's a really compromised state for the body and it's only intended to we do need stress but we're only intended to be in that state for a short period of time to get ourselves out of a stressful situation but whenever that turns chronic which can be um, just for more than say three or four days um, that's a long enough time for it to be chronic and to be affecting our body's responses. Um, we want to be in the parasympathetic nervous system where our cortisol is reduced, our melatonin's, melatonin's increased, we're in rest and digest, we're absorbing our nutrients, our immune system's been able to function properly, um, and our food is absorbed and you know digested appropriately. And simple things that we can do now um, to um, promote the parasympathetic nervous system is monitoring our social media, um, even, you know, try and split it up into different blocks throughout the day. I've actually been myself, just given myself like two to three 30 minute periods throughout the day for social media rather than scrolling the whole day, um, managing your intake of news, because if you're watching that all day long, that is going to put your body and this sympathetic um, nervous system response um also even just you know our yoga meditation breathing is one of the most amazing things that can get our body and the parasympathetic nervous system um yeah just trying to you know monitor our kind of behaviors and patterns throughout the day so we feel more relaxed is like really 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 massive one but other things that feed and do that and um, that we can do with our diet is managing our caffeine intake, um, you know, keeping that to the, the start of the day rather than all all through the day. So maybe cutting off at 12. So it'll help us to manage our sleep at night properly, um, like cutting down or eliminating refined sugars, a lot of cakes, biscuits, sweets, all that. Um they spike our blood sugar levels, which have a direct impact on cortisol levels, uh, monitoring or processed food intake. You know, all these things, people might not think they have an impact, but they do all, like, you know, have a long-term goal as to how they affect the body. So by, well, there's, there's a question now that's coming to my mind as, as the idea, like intermittent intermittent fasting, fasting but why that's coming to my mind is the idea that you know if people are constantly in an anxious state or are const constantly being fed um sort of panic mode or urgent information the body kind of tightens up and as you say it's not essential for your body then they, they, they digest food to start feeding um 
transitioning all the food into the energy that we need and the nutrients that we need to fight off whatever's going on. Um, so is that something that people would entertain if they spaced out time between their meals? It actually gives their body that bit of a time that even if they were in a more of a panic mode where they naturally go into a more the parasympathetic side of, side of things where people are more relaxed, um, allows the system then to sort of kick in. There's two sides to the intermittent, intermittent fasting kind of time restricted eating um, concept, and one of them is that it is really good for digestive function. So the way our digestive system works is it does work more optimally when we give it breaks. So there is a complex that works within the digestive system called the migrating motor complex. So the way I like to describe this is basically it's just like a big brush that works through the digestive system that clears it out. But for this to work um, optimally, it takes about four hours of inactivity in the digestive system for the migrating motor complex to work. Now, if you look at the the standard diet where somebody will eat breakfast, maybe say 7 a.m., then they'll have a, you know, like a snack at 10 a.m., then they'll have lunch at 1 they might have a snack at three. They might have dinner at seven. Throughout the day, normally they're not really given that, that a chance to work. So if you did look at doing, you know, overnight, people will have it obviously unless they're eating in the nighttime. But um, so if you look at fasting, it will allow you that to work um, more optimally. And a lot of people do, um, you know, get a lot of benefits from intermittent fasting um, and time-restricted eating. Um to support the digestive system and then people will find that because they're eating in a shorter time window they'll eat less calories they'll eat more um you know they'll choose what they're eating more smart like smart make smarter food choices and um they will it's really good for weight management and stuff but whenever it comes to being in an anxious or a stressed state that's one kind of time when you that and when somebody's pregnant or breastfeeding would be not the best times to go for you know a time restricted eating window um because of the fact of the impact it can have on our kind of blood sugars and our cortisol levels uh but some ways that people could do it is just by cutting out snacking and between meals so you could still have your main meals breakfast lunch dinner but maybe just not snack in between and leave a four hour window in between, which will allow the digestive system to rest and digest and um, kind of clear itself out before the next meal. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Oh, it does. Uh, that makes sense. Um, I've just noticed we've cut out three times now on Facebook, so I have no idea why we've. Overnight? That's uh, what we're recording it on now, so we'll post it up um, in a wee bit. Um, so, Nutrients. Everybody talks about getting the right nutrients, and so we eat the eating carbs, proteins, all these different things. Um, if somebody's thinking of building up their immune system, what would be the kind of things that they would focus on? Um. So basically, you want to be getting a good mix of your um fibrous foods, so your whole grains, um, like your uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Whole grains, um, fruits, vegetables are all amazing sources of fiber. Um, they literally feed the gut bacteria. So fiber is essentially food for the gut bacteria rather than us. We want to feed it the right fuel so that they can carry out the right um, kind of functions to support our immune system and our body. So, you know, your whole grains, whole grain rice, whole grain pasta, whole grain bread, choosing those over white grains. Um, just getting a good mix of your veg. Um, I would say half your plate um, should be veg um, whenever you're eating your main meals. Um, then your next biggest portion should be your carbs. Then your next biggest portion should be your protein. Um, also, yeah, good quality proteins is another one. So um, proteins, a lot of people just associate protein with, you know, building up your muscles. Because a lot of people relate it to the gym and when people want to kind of get built or whatever, um, which is right, protein is a building block of our muscles, our tissues, our organs. It's really important that we get the right kind of type of proteins in our diet. Um, but another thing that protein does is it supports the um, production and function of hormones. Um, now, 
these are hormones like you know our hormones that um that uh, will um support sleep hormones for digestion hormones for um reproduction but also hormones to support the immune system and one of them being interferon which is a hormone that will support cells to stop replication of viruses which is something that we want to be happening and going on in the body now specifically at this time um so good quality protein would be um you're you know going for a local kind of grass-fed option if you can um chicken turkey beef um a wild fish so you can get what frozen wild fish um and supermarkets quite readily with the meat i would try and get from a local butcher or a source that you know um where it's coming from uh because the same goes with um you know animal products uh a lot of them, the lower quality, lower grade ones, are pumped full of a lot of um, antibiotics, growth hormones, and stuff like that, which whatever's going into the animal is going into our body whenever we eat it. So that's why we want to choose a better quality um, source. And they are more expensive, but you will just, you know, naturally probably eat less of it. And we've also got our really amazing um, plant-based sources of protein, so nuts, seeds, um, you know, good organic um, fruit, um, tofu, um, tempeh, uh, even good organic eggs are amazing as well. So these are like basic things, but they are important that we make the right choices with them. Mm -hmm. So even now, the support, the, the support in the golf, the gut with the appropriate nutrients. Is there anything now that supplies are not as easy to get? Now I'd seen something on um Facebook and a friend of mine um was sharing it out with the website for um season harvest. So there's doing the fruit baskets and bread veg baskets at the minute and they are doing doorstep deliveries. So that's local here to Northern Ireland. Um where would you suggest now would be a good place? Because obviously people's been out and they've been amongst hoarding the toilet rolls. You know, it's been things like the pasta and all the dried kind of foods. Um, where where would a good place to get start getting the nutritious things or what could people have lying about that they wouldn't think is nutritious that would be supportive of their immune system? Um, for me personally, I'm making use of the um, home delivery as well. The farm that I get my organic veg from they're delivering um so they're um called be organic um that's what their facebook page is and they're muff so like i basically on thursday got a delivery of i kind of don't even remember what day it is at the minute sometimes <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it just feels like a weekend day all the time but um yeah so i got like my kale my salad leaves potatoes or carrots parsnips broccoli all that um so we can still avail of that i know white oaks are doing the same as well which are local to kind of donegal dairy um and, and i'm sure like other organic like local farms are doing the same in areas because they are essential they are providing food and they are you know able to go out and deliver so it means that you don't have to go to the supermarket as well plus it tastes nicer um, there's so much more nutrients in the um in the products because they're not traveling far, they're not losing nutrients on travel, um, they're seasonal. Uh you're supporting your local businesses as well too. So there's just so many reasons why it is amazing to try and support local businesses. And Ireland has got so many different crops like we're totally able to be self-sufficient and the foods that we can um, grow and produce so um, there is a lot of variety there it's just um, about seeing what options are available nearby. Um, when it comes to somebody that's not very familiar with maybe sort of the healthier kind of recipes and things to get and somebody that wants to um, try something new where's a good place to kind of start i know do you put up a lot of stuff on instagram we good sort of very good recipe smoothies um even like no bake foods i've seen you do that haven't you, you do like the no bake kind of stuff i um 
I find with private clients, like it depends. Some people like cooking, some people don't. And if you can make things as easy for people as possible, you know, it helps to make sure that people are getting all the nutrients and the goodness that they need. And it doesn't necessarily have to take a lot of time. Like, um, for example, I just posted on my story on Instagram there, a chia seed and oat overnight pudding. Literally takes me two seconds to make it with, you know, a bit of vanilla essence, some, um, you know, I use dairy-free milk, so some rice milk. Um, and then you just dress it with, like, I had raspberries, nuts, seeds, and stuff on it. It's tasty. It's got all the, the building blocks of what um, I was just talking about, your fiber-rich foods, good quality protein. It's got berries in it, high in vitamin C, high in loads of nutrients. Um, even the likes of like sweet kind of like treats, so oat and um, dark chocolate and bake bars, which are so easy to make and they're lovely. Smoothies are brilliant as well. Um, I do share a lot of the recipes on Instagram and I am I have actually started up a blog on my website um, which I'm aiming to put like a lot of the recipes on there so um, there are so many blogs and stuff out there now so if it is something that people are interested in it's just a matter of sticking in healthy recipes even on Instagram or Google and seeing what you know what comes up. Mm -hmm. What's another thing that's come to me there, you know, where people stockpiling the licks of the pasta and things like that, you know, a lot of the, the nuts that you can get and nuts are very nutritious and they, they have a long kind of shelf, like they're not one of these things, that, you know, if it's like an apple, orange, banana, it's without seven days kind of a shelf life. But is there other things that people would maybe think of maybe buying in and I'm thinking even lentils or some kind of pulses mm -hmm. or things like that, you know, what's, what's, what have you found that's good to kind of have in the cupboard just to throw into something to make it a bit different? I uh, so like I would say my cupboard has always got them that that would be like my staples that I would use anyway, but they are long life. So beans, legumes, pulses like your chickpeas, cannellini beans, um you can buy like red split lentils. Um there you can buy them in bags. Um they're so cheap. If you just soak them overnight, um and then um boil them and rinse them off. Um, you can have loads of them and freeze them in little bags then so that you can just take them out and add them into different things if you do cook a big batch of them um, the likes of your brown rice, quinoa they're so, they're so versatile you can do so many things with them um, I always keep things like you know I am dairy intolerant so I try to mess around with different things that can be creamy and you know, um, loads of flavour that um, are dairy free. So tahini is a really good one as well, which is a sesame seed paste. Um, you can use that for sweet and savoury recipes. Brown rice noodles, um, I would use as well. I love Thai and stuff. So even having some, you know, I've got a couple of extra long life cartons of your um, dairy free milk. So like brown rice milk or um, like almond milk. And like some tins of coconut milk, even I keep um, uh, a couple of tins of tuna spare, um, a couple of tins of say mackerel, sardines, which are omega threes. Um, they're good for supporting um, your brain health and for reducing inflammation. Um, you just want to monitor how much tinned fish you have because the likes of tuna can be high in mercury. So like two to three tons a week would be fine, but any more than that, I wouldn't recommend to be having, you know, a few tons a day or whatever. Um, but even the likes of potatoes, sweet potatoes, like if you keep them in a cool cupboard, they'll be fine for a couple of weeks. Um, you can freeze fruit. So like what I did was bought like, you know, I used raspberries that I had frozen today. Um, other things like freeze well or even bread milk um you can freeze them and keep them take them out when you need them uh what else i had a little note about this because i was talking about it the other day um obviously your meat your fish butter as well to you freeze as well you can also make like stock and freeze that in bags that stays um 
that's fine to take out then. Um, herbs, fresh herbs and spices, you can freeze them and keep them in the freezer. Uh, what else was I going to say? Yeah, so what's really good as well too, the likes of pasta. If people have bought a lot of pasta, you can cook your pasta. That'll be fine for up to five days in the fridge. But if you make like a big um, pot of like pasta sauce, say it's a tomatoey herby pasta sauce, you can freeze that in bags and then add it to the pasta. So you can already have it made. Then if you want, you could add chicken or prawns or if you want to add tofu or whatever. So it's like a bit of batch cooking, meal prepping. Say if somebody does feel sick or they're, you know, if they are affected by the virus, then they'll have some healthy foods that are already prepared so they can eat well, even when they're not feeling well. Mm -hmm. One tip though, don't, if you're freezing bananas, take the skin off first. Don't freeze them with the skin on. Oh, we have to go black then, don't they? Uh, and it's, you can't really get it off. Is that speaking from experience or is that just something you've, you've picked up? <laughs> okay, well, better both. <laughs> they, um, so, is there anything else that you would like to see, kind of share with us or would be kind of useful to know? Um, yeah, so another thing, I was talking to you earlier and I was just saying, saying like be mindful of the four pillars. So optimizing your stress, trying to reduce that where you can. Um, increasing your kind of, you know, your good quality nutrients, your fiber, your protein, your fruits, your veg, um, your good quality fats. Uh, then um, hydration is important. So water is also so important for supporting a lot of processes in the body, including digestion, including production of neurotransmitters and hormones that contribute to, you know, mental and physical health. Um, being mindful of caffeine intake, like I talked about. Uh, also movement. So, you know, um, we're now currently permitted to go out for one form of exercise a day. So I would say get out and, you know, a walk or a run, um, even if it's yoga. That they're all, they have all been shown to um, increase the production of GABA, which is a neurotransmitter that helps to reduce anxiety. So, um we want to support that wherever we can because there is a lot of uncertainty and stress going on. Um, breathing techniques are amazing. Optimizing our sleep is a big one. So I would say staying in a routine, you know, try not to sleep until late in the day, have a set time that you get up at, then, you know, have your kind of set time that you go to bed at so your body stays in the correct circadian rhythm. Because remembering that whenever we're sleeping, that's when we're producing melatonin that's when we're healing, that's when our bodies are kind of restoring. So we want to get a good quality sleep um, rather than a light sleep where you're waking up all the time. This is also really, really important for supporting our immune function. So optimizing sleep, being mindful of caffeine and alcohol around bedtime. You know, with alcohol, if you are having a few drinks, that's fine if you're having them um, in the evening time, but try and cut it off a couple of hours before bed or else it will disrupt sleep. Um, caffeine can take up to 12 hours to metabolize in the body. So be mindful of that if you are having issues with your sleep. Um, there are so many other things. There's so many other, you know, there's being a mindful of vitamin D, um, which we get from sunshine. But at this time of the year, even though it has, you know, it's been nice the past couple of days, um, the sun's very um, low in the sky. So we don't get as much of the, vitamin D that we need to have a therapeutic effect in the body so um, vitamin D is a very big immune regulatory um, nutrient so we could supplement at this time to help boost our immune system and there are other kind of like supplements that you could get in supplement form but you also get in food so um, th those are things as well that can help to support the immune system I suppose that's a good one that most people don't would re, re, not really recognize you know especially a lot of people that have that are now ho at home self-isolating and are used to being in do 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 go 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 mode that actually one of the best things that they actually can do is actually act, will actually chill out relax um 
and give your, your body the time to actually just stay in a nice restful space and get a good quality sleep. That's one of the most important things, like, honestly. And use, use this time wisely to do that. Mm-hmm. That's a very good takeaway to, um, to stay with. Um, I think we'll kind of wrap it up there, Jade. It's been very good to have you on. It's been 45 minutes. I'll do a record. I'll put the recording of this um, up now shortly. Um, not sure what happened with Facebook. I had a great help with Stephen there earlier to get me on in the first place, but it seems to be a thing on Facebook side of it. Uh, right. But thanks very much for your time. And for people to check out the recipes and things together, as it's Jade, um, what's your web address? Um, www.restorenutrition.co.uk mm-hmm. uh, if you go on there it's got links to Facebook, Instagram and all that so um, it's easily accessible there's a lot on Instagram you're um, very, very active on Instagram um, and again if people just have questions that's probably the best place to reach out to you just through Instagram or yeah. through the website mm-hmm. thank you for having me no bother